RFID, or Radio Frequency Identification, is a technology that allows us to make quick payments and unlock doors, but I've been experimenting with it in a different way, by embedding a transceiver in my hand. At SparkFun, we sell a wide array of RFID products, including multiple kinds of readers and a variety of tags, including the glass capsule tag. But it is important to note that the tags I'm going to use in the procedure we're about to show you are not the tags that we sell on SparkFun.com. I bought my tags pre-sterilized in an injection assembly from a company called DangerousThings.com. And as the name implies, they are in fact a dangerous thing. Any time that you open the skin and insert a foreign body, then you're introducing the risk of infection and injury. So do not do this at home unless you have carefully considered the risks and you're working with an experienced piercing professional. So without further ado, let's get weird. The first thing that I'm gonna do is prepare the area for the procedure by laying down a nice sterile mat. That way I can open sterile instruments and lay them down without risk of contamination. Now with Prevantix PDI, I'm gonna prepare the injection site. It kills bacteria and reduces the risk of infection. Now with a sterile surgical pen, I'm gonna measure and mark the metacarpal bone of the index finger. Trace that bone down to the trapezoid bone, which is where that bone connects with your thumb and basically draw a line there. Now, I'm not actually drawing a line because I can kind of clearly see my metacarpal bone, but I wanna mark the midway point between my knuckle and the trapezoid. Next, I'm going to uh, abduct my thumb, basically pull my thumb up against my index finger so that the triangular area of my hand here makes a hump shape, and I wanna follow the line that I've just drawn at the midpoint of my metacarpal bone out to the top of that hump and put a dot there. That should be the location where my tag rests. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark where I'm going to inject the transponder, and that mark should be a couple millimeters, maybe more than a centimeter, up from the injection site, sort of closer to the knuckle of the index finger. Now I can unpackage the injection assembly. You wanna make sure to remove the safety clip from the plunger of the injection assembly. If you don't do this now, it's gonna be really hard to do once the needle is actually in your hand. Before I actually make the injection, I need to roll and tent the skin in the area where the tag's gonna sit. This dislodges large blood vessels from the muscle tissue. Now, keeping the injection assembly parallel to my index finger, I'm gonna go ahead and apply slow and steady pressure and push the needle through the dermis so that it's resting in between the layers of the dermis and the fascia. Once the needle has made its way back to the central mark where I want the tag to rest, I'm gonna go just a little bit deeper in order to create a pocket parallel to the metacarpal bone for the transponder to sit in. I back the needle out just a few millimeters and then start depressing the plunger in order to push the tag out into the spot where I want it to sit. As I depress the plunger, I pull the needle out and then I cover it with a little bit of gauze and hold the gauze in place until the bleeding stops. And there it is, the tag is in place. It's been a few weeks now since the procedure that you just watched, and as you can tell, the whole site has healed up really well. The swelling's gone completely down, there is a little bit of a mark here from the injection site, and that will actually leave a small scar. As you can see on my other hand, this implant is actually a few months old at this point, and there's just the slightest discoloration here uh, where the injection site is. I'm using one of our ID20 RFID readers on the back of a USB RFID Explorer. The tag in my right hand is a 125 kilohertz RFID tag, which can be read with uh, our whole range of ID Innovations RFID readers. And if I wave my right hand over it, you'll hear a beep, and you can see my ID number pops up on the screen. While the 125 kilohertz tag has a slightly higher read range, it also doesn't carry any data except for its unique ID number. The one in my left hand is a near-field compatible RFID tag, which runs at 13 megahertz and can talk to anything that's near-field communication. I have a Samsung Galaxy S4, which is an NFC compatible phone, and if I just place it over my left hand, right where the implant site is, it should make a noise. And you can see NFC request comes up and asks if you want to download contact info for my phone number. The near field tag carries all sorts of information. In fact, the one in my hand right now has been programmed with my contact info. So if I swipe my hand along a cell phone, it automatically downloads all of my contact info. 
Here's a practical application of the RFID capsule in my hand. Now when I park my car, I don't have to take my keys with me because I can simply unlock the door with my hand. Like that. Just behind the sticker on my driver's side window, there's one of our ID12 RFID readers. I have that connected to an Arduino using a piece of Cat5 cable that goes down through my door panel, and the Arduino is connected to a few of our Beefcake relay kits. Those relay kits are tapping into the existing door lock controls for my truck. Whenever I've told somebody that I've done this, there are always a few common concerns that get brought up, and so I thought it was worth bringing them up here and addressing them in the video. First of all, there's the infection risk. They want to know how risky is this actually as a procedure. The infection risk is minimized because I'm using a tag that's already in an injection assembly and the whole thing has been sterilized using ethylene oxide gas when I get it. Uh, all of the implements that I use are single use implements that are also pre-sterilized. You want to practice safe aseptic procedure, make sure you're not doing this in a filthy garage or in a public restroom. Just use common sense, basically. Another concern is the injury risk. I do have a hollow glass capsule embedded in my hand, and just to think of it, doesn't sound like a good situation to be in. Luckily, this is a very small glass capsule and it has very thick walls, so it would be really hard to apply enough mechanical force to crush the glass without doing significant damage to your hand anyway. The placement does a lot to mitigate the injury risk because this is a soft portion of my hand where the tag doesn't have anything to sit up against to abrade or to crush. Another concern is about whether or not I can be tracked using the chip in my hand. This comes down to a fundamental misunderstanding of the word tracking. Tracking is not the same as locating. You can use a GPS module to locate somebody. In other words, you can tell in real time where they are but you can't use an RFID tag like that. The read range of this tag is a few centimeters at best, so it wouldn't do you a whole lot of good to have some reader in the sky looking for this tag because you're just never gonna see it. There are two types of bioglass, and this is made out of the kind that doesn't bind to the surrounding tissue. So during the healing process, the tissue actually forms sort of a fibrous capsule around the glass capsule, which encases it and basically protects the surrounding tissue from the foreign body. If I want to remove it, all I have to do is make a small incision over top where the tag is, sort of separate the fibrous tissue around it, and it should pop right out of my hand. The other concern that a lot of people have are about MRI machines and airport scanners. Now, I haven't been through an airport scanner since I got these implants done, but I'm told that while they do show up on an airport scanner, they don't look, uh, they don't look like anything to be worried about. Usually you don't get pulled aside for some sort of search or anything like that. Um, it sort of goes under the same category as body jewelry. MRI machines can create very strong magnetic fields, and so people have a concern that it would possibly pull the tag uh, up through your body, possibly causing it to migrate or causing damage to the surrounding tissue, or maybe even inducing a current in the tag and causing it to heat up. Uh, I've talked to people who have tags, uh, who have had them for a long time, who get uh, fairly regular MRI imaging done, and uh, it hasn't been a problem for them. What may be a problem is convincing the tech to actually let you get an MRI with the tag in because the machine's really expensive and you don't want foreign things slopping around inside the machine if it did somehow escape your hand. 